In this video, we will talk about the functions of the plasma protein. So, what is the first question? It says enumerate the plasma proteins along with the site of their synthesis and what is the normal serum value of plasma proteins. So, there are various plasma proteins but uh, for writing the answer, you should remember at least three major plasma proteins and these include the albumin, albumin, and albumin is in highest concentration. It is ranging from 3.5 to 5 gram per deciliter. Deciliter is 100 ml of blood. So in 100 ml of blood, 3.5 to 5 grams of albumin is present. Globulin is there. Globulin again it was of three types, alpha, beta and gamma. And uh, it ranges from 2.3 to 3.5 gram per deciliter. And fibrinogen. Is present which is much lesser it is only 200 to 400 milligram not gram milligram per deciliter okay so that is albumin globulin and fibrinogen these are the major plasma proteins you should remember them then a total normal plasma protein concentration is 6 to 8 gram per deciliter okay so albumin you remember easy values to remember 3.5 to 5 this you can remember round it out you can remember is 2.5 to 3.5 and fibrinogen no need to remember the uh, concentration as such okay normal plasma protein concentration 6 to 8 gram per deciliter and where are they synthesized remember if it is not told where are they synthesized then rule of thumb is that they are synthesized in liver okay so all plasma proteins are synthesized in liver except some exceptions are there and in this list the exception include the gamma globulin okay so here globulin we have seen three types alpha beta and gamma so this gamma globulin is the one which is produced by b lymphocytes actually these are the antibodies the immunoglobulins okay so this gamma globulins are synthesized by b lymphocytes this is asked as mcq as well rest other are synthesized in liver Moving on to the next question that what is the significance of albumin globulin ratio. So we have seen the concentration of albumin and globulin. Albumin was 3.5 to 5 gram per deciliter and uh, globulin is how much? It is 2.5 to 3.5 gram per deciliter. So what will be its ratio? You just divide albumin by globulin and you will get a ratio of 1.5 to 2.5 is to 1 okay so if there is one globulin in with respect to that there will be 1.5 to 2.5 albumin okay so this is the normal ratio important to remember clinically it has significance because we have seen albumin levels are more compared to the globulin so there are certain diseases in which albumin globulin ratio decreases okay and why it decreases see it decreases in liver diseases liver diseases why see albumin we have seen that it is synthesized in liver. Globulin also is synthesized in the liver but it has its component gamma globulin. Gamma globulin which is synthesized by the B lymphocytes right. So if we see the ratio there is decrease in albumin more compared to that of the globulin okay. So globulin doesn't decrease proportionately as gamma globulins are synthesized by B lymphocytes. So albumin globulin ratio decreases in liver diseases. You will be asked a question, give reason why albumin globulin ratio decreases in liver diseases. So that can also be a question, right? Moving on to the next question, briefly explain the functions of plasma protein. So this can be a short answer question. Now we have seen three major plasma proteins, albumin, globulin, fibrinogen. So you should at least remember the functions of all of these, right? And then there are other proteins also which have functions. So first is albumin. Albumin main function is to exert on cortic pressure, okay? So in the vessels, there are two types of uh, pressure. These are the Starling's forces that is known as hydrostatic pressure. So let me draw if this is the capillary and here blood is flowing. There will be hydrostatic pressure which is a push force for the movement of the fluid outside the capillaries and then there is oncotic pressure. Oncotic pressure is due to the presence of these plasma proteins mainly albumin 
right? And this is the pull force which brings back the fluid into the blood vessel. So it's a pull force. Now in the plasma proteins, albumin contributes maximally to oncotic pressure. See, oncotic pressure basically is the osmotic pressure which is exerted by proteins only. Total osmotic pressure, it is exerted by ions as well as the proteins. But uh, oncotic pressure is the osmotic pressure exerted by proteins. And among the proteins, it is the albumin which exerts its maximally. What is the reason? Albumin actually has less molecular weight okay less molecular weight so if we take the same concentration of the protein with respect to other protein number of molecules of albumin will be more okay understanding so let us see say suppose we are taking 2.5 gram of albumin and we are taking same 2.5 gram of globulin or fibrinogen now since the molecular weight of albumin is lesser that means in the same 2.5 gram, we have more number of molecules. Okay, then only it will sum up to 2.5 gram totally because molecular weight is lesser. And uh, osmotic pressure actually depends on the number of the solute molecules. It doesn't depend on the concentration alone. Okay, so it depends on the number of the molecules. So for the same concentration, albumin has more number of the molecules. That is why albumin contributes maximally to oncotic pressure. And we have seen that its concentration is also more compared to the globulin. So its uh, number of molecules will be much more. So that is first function. Albumin exerts oncotic pressure right then next is transport and binding proteins so these proteins bind with substances and help in transport of these substances and these substances are water insoluble substances water insoluble substances okay so albumin binds non-specifically non-specifically while globin binds specifically meaning what see these are water insoluble substances say suppose lipids are there there are certain hormones are there now because these are water uh, insoluble they cannot be transported just like that they cannot be transported just like that in the blood isn't it so they need to bind to another protein protein is water soluble so they bind to them that is one thing now albumin binds non-specifically meaning what that means it can bind to any substance it's not a lock and key phenomena okay it can bind to hormones amino acids and it is transporting them into circulation why globulin binds specifically to substances meaning that for a particular substance there is a particular globin for example there is thyroid binding globulin thyroid binding globulin will transport only thyroid hormone steroid binding globulin will transport only steroid hormone okay then there are other proteins which transport other substances for example there is presence of transferrin iron binds to this so that transports iron then there is ceruloplasmin ceruloplasmin binds with copper okay so these all can be as as mcqs transferrin binds with iron ceruloplasmin binds with copper then next function Next function is immunity and inflammation. Immunity and inflammation. So we have talked about albumin. We are discussing about globulin. We discussed that it is binding specifically to substance. Then we have that gamma globulins as well. Right? Gamma globulins that is the immunoglobulins. They are produced by B lymphocytes. So these are immunoglobulins or antibodies. These antibodies have protective function. So plasma proteins also are important for immunity. Then there is another plasma protein that is alpha 2 macroglobulin. It is an antiprotease. Antiprotease. Protease is an enzyme which will break down the proteins. Right. So this alpha 2 macroglobulin is an antiprotease and this helps limit inflammation. Okay. So there are both pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory proteins. Like gamma globulins, they will promote the inflammation. But on the other hand, alpha 2 macroglobulin, that will decrease the inflammation. So that was about the globulins. Moving on to the next function that is viscosity. So we have talked about uh, albumin globulin. This is the third protein, fibrinogen. Fibrinogen contributes maximally to viscosity of blood as far as proteins are considered. Okay. So actually blood viscosity mainly is due to the RBCs. RBCs are in very high number. They are in million. So blood viscosity that is resistance to flow. 
viscosity is resistance to flow so that is mainly because of rbcs but when we talk about the proteins it is the fibrinogen why we have seen that the fibrinogen concentration is less but why fibrinogen contributes more to viscosity that is because of its shape it has a fibrillar shape fibrillar shape okay so something like this shape is something like this so you see if such a molecule is flowing in the circulation then it is flowing zigzag right so that will offer resistance to flow right then there is coagulation and anticoagulation so in blood we have coagulation factors coagulation factors we have various coagulation factors which help in blood coagulation so suppose there is an injury there will be flow of blood outside the blood vessels so that has to be stopped that is brought about by coagulation factor and there are anticoagulation factors also which are also proteins and these anticoagulation factors prevent the coagulation of blood normally so when blood is flowing normally in blood vessels we don't want clot to form unnecessary in blood vessels okay we don't want that so that time these anticoagulation factors help uh, the uh, blood to remain in the flowing state okay so example of this is antithrombin 3 is there protein c is there protein s is there this we will discuss in detail when we talk about the clotting mechanism right and there are coagulation factors as well if there is an injury they will lead to the formation of the clot then there are inactive precursors of proteins so in the uh, plasma we have inactive precursors of other proteins so they are inactive they need to be activated example the angiotensinogen angiotensinogen is a type of alpha globulin again globulins what type we discussed we discussed alpha beta gamma right gamma we said it is for immunity it is for immunity right then we said there are globulins for transport of substances and now we are telling that there are various alpha globulins which are acting as inactive precursors of proteins okay then the proteins provide an exchange pool of amino acids meaning what see we have amino acids and the various amino acids when combined together they form the protein chain okay so they can form different protein chain so this can be protein 1 this can be protein 2 now uh, proteins are formed from amino acid but these amino acids can also form from protein okay so there can be breakdown of this uh, protein into amino acid so that the amino acids can be utilized for the production of another protein okay so that is exchange pool that means the pool of amino acids is being recycled some plasma proteins are being broken down other plasma proteins are being synthesized by maintaining this amino acid pool then the proteins also act as buffers they contribute to 15% of buffering capacity of blood what is buffer buffer will basically help in preventing the change in ph change in ph is not allowed so these proteins have basically the co group right and there is nh2 group so because of this amino and carboxyl group it can either bind to hydrogen ion or it can release the hydrogen ion okay it can release also and it can bind also so these proteins act as buffers because of the presence of this amino and carboxyl group so these were the functions of the plasma proteins quickly we will revise what are the functions we had seen albumin uh, exerts on cortic pressure then plasma proteins act as transport and binding proteins albumin binds non specifically globulin binds specifically then there is transport of minerals iron binds to transferrin copper binds to ceruloplasmin then we have immunity and inflammation that is the antibodies and we have anti proteases as well viscosity provided by fibrinogen viscosity is resistance to blood flow then for coagulation and anticoagulation there are plasma proteins which are inactive precursors of proteins they provide an exchange pool of amino acid and these plasma proteins also act as buffers fine moving on to the next question what is plasma peresis plasma peresis is removal of plasma from blood basically we take out the plasma from blood we exchange it with other plasma why it is happening we do plasma peresis to remove excess plasma proteins 
okay if there is increase in blood viscosity so there are certain conditions in which the plasma proteins may increase too much so that will increase the blood viscosity too much and then the resistance to blood flow will increase okay that is not good that is going to increase the blood pressure also that will decrease the supply of oxygen to the tissues also so in that case those plasma proteins need to be removed so we need to do plasmapheresis second indication is Patients with autoantibodies, if they are not responding to other treatment, patients with autoantibodies as in myasthenia gravis. So, this helps in removing the autoantibodies. Third question, what is hypoproteinemia and what is its clinical significance? So, we have seen the normal concentration. What is the normal concentration? We have seen it is 6 to 8 gram per deciliter. Hypoproteinemia is decrease in plasma protein concentration to less than 3.5 gram per deciliter. Okay. And this decrease in plasma protein decreases the oncotic pressure and hence leads to edema. Okay. So we have seen that albumin is the main protein which is exerting the oncotic pressure. When the plasma protein concentration decreases so much, then the oncotic pressure decreases. And we have seen that in blood vessel, there are two types of forces, hydrostatic force, which is a push force, oncotic pressure, which is the pull force. So if oncotic pressure is less, this pull force will decrease and there will be accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space, interstitial space. So this is known as edema. So decrease in plasma protein concentration, it is going to lead to edema. Now, when will this decrease occur? What can be the causes? It can occur if there is decrease in synthesis of these plasma proteins or it can occur if there is increased loss of these plasma proteins. Okay. So, decrease synthesis when it will occur? We have seen that plasma proteins are being synthesized in the liver and for their synthesis, amino acids is required. Okay. So, if there is decrease in amino acids, in blood when can it occur if there is malnutrition the person is not taking protein diet the person is malnourished or there is malabsorption that means he is eating properly but whatever nutrients are there they are not being absorbed okay so malnutrition malabsorption then second is liver disorders because okay there is availability of raw materials but the machinery itself is not working so liver diseases and when will increased loss of protein occur? It can occur if there is increased breakdown as it occurs in burns or there is loss of these proteins in the kidney. Okay. Normally, proteins are not filtered in the kidney. Proteins are not lost in urine. But if there is presence of some kidney diseases, basically glomerular disorders occur in which there is filtration of these proteins as well and then they are being lost in the urine. So that is known as nephrotic syndrome. So in that case, there will be increased loss of proteins and all these causes will lead to edema. That is edema occurring due to decrease in oncotic pressure. There are other causes of edema that we will see in Stalling's forces. But here we are talking only about the plasma proteins. So those were the different questions which are asked in plasma protein. Before ending, I just want to inform that uh, you can download the app Physiology Open where we have uh, full MCQs in physiology, detailed exhaustive MCQs are there. We have notes in physiology, question and answer notes in physiology. We have full physiology videos also. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.